Dr. Aspen, how are MCAS and POTS related? POTS is <laughs> um, one of probably hundreds of diseases um, where we're increasingly coming to suspect that some proportion of the patients who are diagnosed with POTS probably have MCAS uh, of one variant or another at the root of it. Um, it, it there, there's a great amount of research to be done. No, th this is a hypothesis. Nobody has actually proven yet that uh, MCAS of any sort uh, actually does underlie um, uh, POTS. Um, but there are, um, and it's probably worth noting that so far nobody has really identified any other clear causes of POTS. And there are particular ways that mast cells behave and more to the point misbehave uh, that um, makes it quite possible that they might be at the root uh, in, in at least some cases of POTS. Just to begin with, there's the anatomy of it. Uh, I mean, where are the mast cells located in the body? Well, in truth, they're everywhere, but in most tissues, they're pretty sparsely distributed. Uh, hard to imagine they can cause a whole lot of trouble in, in most tissues, but where they're dominantly cited is at the environmental interfaces, so the, the skin and, and um, uh, respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, genitourinary tract. So they're at the environmental interfaces and in the walls of all vessels and neurons. And this is kind of where you expect to find them uh, so that they can, uh, it's where you expect to find them dominantly cited so that they're well positioned to best serve their principal role in human biology, which is the first line sentinel against any assaults or insults or attacks upon the body. Um, so you've got all these mast cells that under normal conditions are, are uh, sitting in the walls of all vessels, uh, arteries, veins, capillaries, and th that, that's the anatomy of it. And then you look at the biology of this. Uh, yes, there's a large number of mast cell mediators that have effects that you would call inflammatory in nature, other mediators that drive allergic type issues, other mediators that drive <clears throat> that, that are integrally involved in guiding growth and development in all tissues in the body. But there absolutely are uh, a good number of mast cell mediators that have some other uh, uh, properties that really don't fit into any of those categories I just mentioned, including the ability to modulate the um, the caliber of blood vessels. There are mediators that we call vasoconstrictors that can um, uh, constrict a, um, a blood vessel, uh, sometimes even to the point of completely shutting a blood vessel. Um, and there are other mediators that have exactly the opposite effect, uh, dilating uh, the blood vessel. And so, you can imagine that if you've got uh, a bunch of mast cells, in particular dysfunctional mast cells that are uh, in the walls of all vessels, and if these mediators are uh, from time to time um, inappropriately releasing uh, various mediators that can dilate uh, the blood vessels, this can lead to a drop in blood pressure. And that can lead um, in a compensatory fashion to an increase in heart rate. Of course, there are other mast cell mediators too that'll drive an increase in the heart rate kind of regardless of what happens to blood pressure. And if you're wondering, well, why do these 
flares, uh, why, why would these mast cells uh, flare up in their release of these mediators right about the time that somebody is uh, uh, getting upright, uh, you know, going from lying to sitting or from sitting to standing? <clears throat> well, another aspect of mast cell biology comes into play at that point, and you have to keep in mind these cells can uh, sense uh, the presence in their environment of not only particular substances that can trigger their activation, trigger them to further produce and almost instantaneously release uh, potentially any of their mediators. Um, but it's not only substances. It, it, these cells can actually respond to various physical forces, um, even changes in various physical forces. And if you think about it, when you go upright, um, gravity is going to have an effect. It's going to pull uh, your pool of blood that's sitting in all of your blood vessels collectively down toward the lower end of your body, and you're just kind of naturally going to have an instant reduction uh, in pressure uh, inside um, a lot of your blood vessels, particularly the blood vessels higher on up in the body, such as the carotid arteries that are feeding blood to the brain. Um, so if you happen to have some dysfunctional mast cells, and again, this is all hypothesis, none of this has been proven yet, but if you happen to have dysfunctional mast cells in some of these uh, arteries in the upper part of the body that are responsive to pressure changes, and then you, you go upright and the pressure drops, well, these uh, there's plenty of potential for these dysfunctional mast cells to go inappropriately releasing various mediators that might speed up the heart rate and, and further dilate the blood vessels instead of what should be happening when you stand up, which is uh, a constriction of the blood vessels to maintain uh, blood pressure evenly throughout the body and make sure you're still pumping a normal amount of blood uh, from the heart to the brain. Uh, so this is one potential sort of biological or mechanistic route by which it really wouldn't take anything more than just some dysfunctional mast cells, uh, to bring about much of what is seen in POTS. So it's a nice theory, but it, it needs to be proven. Um, well, I should say it's a nice hypothesis, but it still needs to be proven through a lot of hard and probably fairly expensive research. So this is not to say that all POTS has MCAS at the root of it, uh, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point many years from now, the research is done that actually does show that a large proportion of POTS really does have MCAS of one variant or another at the root.